an uncle and aunt of my husband bought this really nice house in East St. Paul, close by Phelan Lake. They have three teenage daughters. One day, one of the girls was washing dishes. As she was reaching for a sponge, she noticed another girl there that wasn't her sister. She turned around to get a closer look and it was another Hmong girl. She didn't know who it was and thought that perhaps it was one of her sister's friends. After she was done, she went into the living room and asked her sisters who the girl was in the kitchen, but they said that they also didn't know what she was talking about. The next day, the second sister was cooking and there was a girl that was helping her. She again thought that it was one of her sisters, but when she turned around, it was another Hmong girl that she didn't know. The second sister asked the girl where she was from, but she didn't answer her. She then asked who she was, but she just stood there staring at her. The second sister got so scared and called her sisters into the kitchen. All three of them stood there staring at the girl. The strange Hmong girl started to cry and told them that she was murdered and that her body was buried under the tree in their backyard. The three sisters got scared. They told their parents about it, but they didn't believe in their daughters. This spirit would show up and help the girls every day. She'd tell the girls that she needed help because she was stuck in the backyard. Their parents still didn't listen or believe in the girls because they couldn't see the spirit. One night, the uncle heard someone walking around the house, so he woke up the aunt and they both went to investigate. They didn't see anything when they walked into the living room, but for some reason, the TV was turned on. They also heard running water coming in from the kitchen. Both parents turned off the TV and turned off the faucet in the kitchen. Suddenly, the toilet in the bathroom flushed all on its own. Strange occurrences happened the entire night. The next morning, the uncle called his cousin from the St. Paul Police Department and told them what happened. He explained what his daughters have been telling him. Later that day, the St. Paul Police Department came and dug around the tree, and sure enough, there was a black trash bag with human bones in it. The bones belonged to a Hmong girl who had been missing for over 10 years. After the bag of bones were removed from the backyard, the girls never saw that ghost girl ever again. Here's another story from my husband. His cousin and wife bought a new house in Minneapolis. It was a big five bedroom house. They only have three kids. The strange thing is that whenever they go somewhere and come back, there would be extra shoes on the shoe rack that didn't belong to them. Another thing was that when guests would come over and visit, they would see white kids running around the house. The visitors would ask the cousin and his wife, why do they have white kids running around their house? Did they happen to adopt them? The cousin and his wife shook their head. They were confused. This happened for a while until one day, one of the kids who was four years old was taking a bath and almost drowned. He was crying, telling his parents that someone was holding his head into the water. The husband yelled at his wife, saying that it was her fault and that she didn't watch the kid. The two of them got into a big fight. The next day, the wife got so mad, she went to the county clerk's office and asked for the records of the house. This was when she found out about the gruesome discovery. A white man had murdered his wife and his children inside that house. The wife put two and two together and informed her husband. The family were so scared and they moved out of that home. They sued the realtor for not disclosing this information to them when he first sold them the home. Interested in sharing your stories? Submit them to homechronicles at gmail.com or in the description below. Here is the next story. Thank you. Every year, my mom and some Hmong ladies would organize to go pick bamboo shoots and thick bamboo shrubs to eat. This one time, when they went, they encountered something very weird and strange. 
My mom recalls being with this other Hmong lady. At first, they were just doing their own thing, breaking and packing the shoots as they made their way through the thick shrubs. She didn't think anything of it at that time. While she was doing her own thing, she heard footsteps ahead of her. They were walking through the shrubs and breaking bamboos as it went. She stopped what she was doing and looked at the other lady. That other lady was just minding her own business, breaking and packing the bamboos behind her. My mom didn't think much of it and continued on to pack the bamboos as she broke them. Despite this, she continued to hear these footsteps ahead of her. This started to really scare her, and by now she looked back at the other lady. That lady was still doing the same thing, and just when she was about to go back and pick up the bamboo shoots, there was a very strong breeze, and with this breeze, a stench filled the air. It was like something had just died in front of her. My mom knew that something was not right. There was something in front of her that she could not see. She turned around and told the other lady, uh, let's stop now and go back. She said that the other lady sort of understood what she meant when she said that because the whole time she felt something walking in front of them too and she smelled the rotten stench. They did not say anything until they got back and out of the shrubs. My mom reckons that it was a dead Hmong lady who had just recently passed away that could have been in front of them. It was because when she was alive, she would often come to visit those areas quite a bit to pick bamboos as well. That North Carolina bamboo is risky. If you guys have never tried North Carolina bamboo, I recommend you do. The other day, my dad went to do jingle bells at this Hmong people's house. The old man my dad was doing the ritual for told him that just a few days before, he saw something very strange in his home. Everyone reckoned that he saw a bunzong in his house. Apparently, he really needed to use the restroom. Now, the toilet in the bathroom shared the entrance door and divided into separate rooms when you walk in. As he entered the entrance door, he saw this lady with her back faced towards him and her waist bent over. Half of her body was inside the toilet room and the other half was poking out of it. From behind, the thing looked like his daughter-in-law. At first, he thought to himself, why would his daughter-in-law be doing something like that in front of him? But then he couldn't see its face. He was going to tell it to move out of the way so he could get to the bathroom. The old man just decided not to say anything and walked back into the living room. When he got back to the living room, his daughter-in-law was in there feeding her baby and not in the bathroom. He thought to himself that it was strange. If it wasn't her in there, then who could it have been? That's when he ran back to the toilets and saw that it was empty. There was nothing there blocking his way. At my parents' home, there's this little tree in their backyard. My mom and dad reckon that there is a supernatural thing that lives under the tree. I questioned them why they believed in that. They said, don't you notice how the surrounding of the tree is always so swept up, tidy and clean? Like there's no dead leaves, twigs, or rocks surrounding it. The strange thing is that this tidy thing that they talk about only goes about four and a half inches around the small tree. Every other tree around that area is messy with dead leaves and twigs around it. But this strange, one singular tree is so nice and tidy weird. My dad said that if you're lucky, or if it's meant to be, then you'll see this thing that lives under the tree. Apparently, it can bring you fortune and luck. So far, we haven't ever seen the actual thing, except for its tidy work around the tree. I guess we're just destined not to be its owner. That means that you should not pee on that tree, but all the other trees are free to pee on. Recently, my brother passed away. A lot of weird things started to happen. It was really sad too. Just before my parents were going to move out of town that my brother died in, they drove to the place that he died and cried and called his name and told my brother that they were going to move away 
and leave him behind. That whole night, a cricket cried all night outside their window. Usually they hear crickets chirping at night, but this one was extraordinarily loud and had very powerful vocals. The cricket chirped on for a very long time. My dad then went outside and told it, My son, please do not cry. You did not listen to me and that's why you are now dead. You didn't listen to me, so now I'm going to have to leave you behind. Please, don't be sad anymore. The cricket continued on to cry all night until the break of dawn, and just when the sun was going to come up, they heard the cry lower and lower, and eventually it faded away. When my parents finally left town, while they were driving out of the town, my little brother was kind of sleepy, but not totally there. For a second, he heard my oldest brother calling his name from a distance. When he heard his name a few times, he snapped out of his drowsiness, and then realized that it was the voice of my oldest brother. The scary thing is that my brother died in the forest. Story has it that this forest that he died in was really haunted too, like it had a Panzong who lived in there. How these Mo elders know it, I don't know. They say that leaves are broken and the places crisscross on top of each other in certain areas and the place gives off a chilly, eerie feeling. Another thing about my brother, after my parents moved away from the town and moved into their new house, one early morning my mother woke up to prepare breakfast and lunch for my dad to take to work. She heard someone softly whistling outside the house. When my brother used to be alive, he loved singing and music. My mother got a little bit scared because this was usually the time that she gets up and it's still really early into the morning. She went into the bedroom and woke my dad up. My dad said to her to not be scared and that it's just our son. Go open the door and call him to come inside. They then both went outside, opened the front door, and called my older brother to come inside to his house. That's a sad story. The cleaning lady at my workplace would always stop and chit-chat with me after she does her rounds. One day, she told me that our office building is one of the creepiest ones that she has worked at. Well, the building that I work in is over 100 years old. One night, after all the workers left, she was cleaning out the break room. She kept on hearing the elevator dinging, but no one would come out of it. The elevator would open and close, go up and down, open and close. Because of this, she got the hell out of there. Then she told me of another encounter. One time, she said that after finishing vacuuming in an area, she turned off the lights and continued to go on into other areas. Well, one night, after she finished with the customer service department, she turned out the lights and continued on into the order entry department. After she was done with her order entry and came back out to do the hallways, the customer service lights were switched back on. She then called out to see if anyone was there, but no answer. She got freaked out and decided to skip the hallway and went straight home. Even the bathrooms here are very freaky. I mean, they're very nice and pretty, but it's got a creepy atmosphere. Ugh. Anybody got any scary workplace stories to share? Please let me know. Send it to me, please. Six months ago, my husband's aunt and uncle foreclosed on their house. They went to rent this house in Warren. At first, everything was okay. It was fine and nothing strange was happening. However, after about a month went by, every time they would cook, there would be hair in the food, and my uncle would yell at the aunt and they'd fight over it. So one time, the aunt said that, Why don't you cook if you don't believe in me? Taking this offer, the uncle decided to cook. However, even when he cooked, there would still be hair in the food and it was everywhere. When they would sleep at night, they would hear noises in the kitchen as if someone is cooking or looking for food, searching through the cupboards. One night, the 14-year-old daughter was reading late at night. She had her bedroom door open, and from the corner of her eyes, 
she said she saw somebody crawling on the ground with their head facing the carpet. The daughter screamed a blood-curdling scream and woke up the parents. She told them about what she saw and she was shaking and their face turned pale. That night, they drove to our place. I remember her face was still very pale when they entered my house. After that, they decided to move out the very next day. We all went to help them move, and that's when the lady next door told us that a young Asian girl had hung herself in the house. That explained everything, from the hair and the food and what the daughter saw. The funny thing is that that house didn't even have that strange feeling like a lot of haunted houses would usually do. My grandpa had just come back from one of his many tours of America, as I call them. He was in the living room retelling the stories to my dad. I was in my room with the door open, sort of practicing my guitar, but I was actually listening as well. On his travels, he met a Hmong man who said that he knew about a girl that could read fortunes. My grandpa forgot if he was in Wisconsin or Michigan. Anyways, my grandpa decided to go see this girl. The reason why he went to see this girl was while he was in Minnesota, he was a guest on some Hmong radio station. When he and the host took a certain call, all they heard was static. My grandpa still has the original tape from the conversation. When he played it for my dad, you could hear the host saying in Hmong, Hello, you're on air. Hello, hello, uh, you're on air. What's your name? Hello? Hmm. I guess we lost them. Well, that's what my grandpa and them heard. On the recording of the tape, all those spots with the pauses, there was some crazy squeaking and squealing noise, but it was in a foreign language. My grandpa played it out loud, and I listened in. After the audio finished, I stopped playing my guitar. My grandpa took the tape to the girl. Now, she claims that she can't actually tell fortunes or communicate with the dead. Oh great, okay, I guess waste your time. She has a little golden Buddha who only she could talk to that would tell her all these things and she would just tell everybody else what the golden Buddha said. When my grandpa showed her the tape, she waited until it was over and then said, that's the voice of the dead. They were talking to you from the other side. They want to ask how your business is going to affect those on the other side. My grandpa was thinking about starting a new church. That's why he was on the radio. Now, here comes the creepy part. As my grandpa keeps playing that horrid sounding tape over and over and over, my dad doesn't buy any of this. All of a sudden, you stop hearing the screeching noises. My grandpa goes, What? Listen, it's gone. It's... The noises... They're gone. And at that moment, I put down my guitar and joined everyone in the living room. That's right. The living room. My girlfriend's dad is a pastor, and their church had bought a new church with a home for the pastor and his family. Well, the house is quite haunted. At their new house, this was during the first couple of weeks. As my girlfriend was going to bed at night, she always turns on her music and keeps it on low. This helps her fall asleep. She had to reset it so that it would go on and on. As she soon fell asleep, she had a dream that an old white lady came into her room. She didn't speak or say anything. She just kept quiet and walked over to her stereo and turned it off. The lady looked at my girlfriend and gave her the quiet finger to her mouth. Then, my girlfriend woke up. It was still dark, but her music had stopped. Not too long after that, her little cousin came over to their house. 
She was about five or six years old at the time. My girlfriend and her sister were both there. The little cousin was peeking into the bathroom and said that there was a white lady in the bathroom. The sister and my girlfriend freaked out. Here's another one. There's this road that my sister takes to work for the last five years. One of her co-workers who worked there had an encounter with a male ghost by the train track. He had followed her home and she got very sick. They had to consult a shaman who performed a ritual to chase out that evil spirit. That co-worker never returned to that road again and neither did my sister.